Hey everybody, welcome back. <laughs> this is episode eight of Jillian's Prep Files. So we are three weeks and six days away <laughs> from the show, the Ben Weeder Naturals. Yes. How are you feeling? It's getting hard. <laughs> it is getting difficult, but we, we upped our game a little bit. You may notice we have these right here. There's a microphone under my shirt, so we're getting fancy. I'm glad that you said that we are three weeks and six days out because for the last several weeks, I have been getting the days and weeks wrong of when the show is. It's always like actual amount of time plus one week. So it goes on social media and I have to call her and be like, honey, come on, diet brain. So we are three weeks and six days yeah. out today. So, all right, what do we want to talk about today? Um, I think today we're just going to kind of get into the challenges of prep. Because I know I, you know, put stuff out there on social media and people see me doing these really, really intense workouts and it seems like things are going along very, very smoothly, um, but it's starting to get very mentally and physically challenging. Right. And then one thing that you may notice, I, this is Hank right here. You can't see him right now, but he has been working overtime as service dog. <laughs> paying attention to both me and Jillian because this is getting difficult and not just for you. It, it's getting difficult for me too, yeah. even though I'm not on as extreme of a prep. So what, what do you find hardest? Is it the training or is it the diet or like what, what's the difficult part of this? It is the relentless consistency. So I cannot say that any one thing is that difficult? You know, is it that difficult to eat my meal? Is it that difficult to get through a training session? It is something ju that just never stops. So right. I think the consistency of hitting every meal, every workout, resting, doing regular work in between that, it, and it's just the duration of time. So interestingly, the diet has not gotten any more difficult. Right. My calories have actually been upped. They have not been bumped yet. We're talking about a little bit potentially of a deficit going into next week over what I'm at, but my last two caloric changes have actually been to add calories and not to decrease them. Well, your scale weight's still going my down and your body composition is still changing. Changing rapidly. So the diet has not actually gotten, if you look at it on paper, it has not gotten any different. However, what it feels like to me is right. very different. I am ravenous all the time. Um, a meal never feels like enough. Right. As soon I, as we finish, the first thing she says is, when do we get when to do eat we get again? To, yes. So right now I am basically passing time from one meal to the next meal. Right. Um, sleep is pretty dramatically disturbed. Right. Um, and somehow, I don't know why, I have always had this issue in the past on preps that I have horrible insomnia and anxiety. Right. And I had previously thought that was linked. I have prepped in the past on much, much less calories. So and, and a compressed period of time, yes, to be fair. This, this is the longest prep that I've ever done. But in all fairness, this is the longest that I have ever been away from competition. Right. So we didn't really know how long it was going to take. But before, I had somewhat equated my insomnia and my anxiety due to very, very low calories. Right. So my calories right now are still over 2,200 a day, averaging roughly 2,400 a day between high days and low days. What I'm realizing more is the insomnia and the anxiety is far more related to body composition. Mm -hmm. The end of the day, women's bodies do not like to operate very, very lean. My body does not want to be here, and that's its way of telling me so. Right. Well, let's real quick. So this morning when we were on our walk, we were talking about the amount of training that we're doing. So let's recap very quickly. We, we work out together. Yeah five days a week and each workout lasts about what would you say about a, an hour there for so me the, the training is roughly an hour for you you don't do all of the glute and accessory and core work at the end Sorry. so <laughs> it's a little longer it's probably another 30 minutes for right. me with the additional small muscle group at the end of it right and small i don't do work. posing practice which if you've never done bodybuilding posing it's it's not just standing there and flexing i mean the flexing is an amount of work so how often would you say you're posing probably post roughly 30 minutes a day most days of the week and then on thursday a little bit longer than that but on average we are doing roughly five sessions a week together this is right. our work together right. of 60 to 75 minutes 
Um, we have increased the amount of walking that we've done with Hank since Which we've Hank lost. Which Hank has really enjoyed. Yeah, since we lost Lucy, Hank's getting even more extra special attention. And really what's driving us walking the dog more is that it's cooled off and it's safer on the right. pavement for him. So we walk in the morning after we work mm -hmm. out for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then we'll walk in the afternoons for, you know, about the same time. And it's generally speaking, he gets at least three miles a day sometimes as many as five and six and miles. Yeah, and sometimes it's longer than that. And in addition to getting him lots of exercise, because we do have an overweight dog, that has been the most helpful thing in managing Correct. my anxiety. And I would say it's sometimes, would you call it even mania? Yes. Yes. So in summary, we figured we were at least 12 hours, probably closer to 13 to 15 hours of training Per week. week and probably roughly 18 for me with the right. other with uh, posing and mobility work and right. the additional stuff in there so when she says that you know her calories haven't changed the activity is ramping up and then the relentless consistency of the actual five days a week split that we're doing for training in the gym so do you want to talk about anxiety or was there something else you wanted to say what we're experiencing when i say it is getting tougher obviously as it gets closer I try to manage it by saying, Jillian, you're doing the exact same things. You're eating the same number of meals. You're doing the same amount of training. And as it gets closer, it just, it, it is getting harder. Right. <laughs> and I know you could relate to that right. as an endurance athlete, as a, as a marathon runner. Right. I mean, you could just say, well, I'm still, I'm just running. I, I'm not doing anything differently. But when you are at mile 26 and you still have two tenths of a mile to go, I mean, I've done over 10 marathons which you know, in the big scheme of things isn't that many, but it means that I know it. That last 0.2 miles feels like a marathon in yeah. itself. And then the Marine Corps Marathon, which is the one that I've done more than any others, because it's the Marines, they like to finish uphill. So <laughs> it, it goes up to the, uh, to the memorial in uh, Arlington. But it's very difficult when you get this close to the end to, to finish uh, because you can see the finish line, but it feels like the finish line is moving yeah. as quickly as you are. And I think the way that I manage it is just every time I work out, every time I eat, it is just, it's an opportunity to make a good choice. I get through that and I move on to the next. So I try not to keep thinking about the show being four weeks away. And I really just break it down into small bite-sized chunks, which is make sure I get my next meal, Right. You know, next workout, rest, do all of the other things in life that still need to go on. And I think that's what's been the most challenging. So I made this decision to do this in mm -hmm. May. At the time that I committed to coming back to competition in May was before we had any problems with the house, and we've shared about it before. Right. Um, we had a serious mold situation due to a tropical storm earlier, right. and we have had um, a total upstairs renovation of the home. So throughout this prep there have been men and people working in right. the home and a complete disturbance to the home environment so i did not know that 20 weeks ago when i committed to this right so i think what's challenging is making this decision that you still need to do all of these things but life is still going on right and for anybody who's watching this later on and not watching them as they come out the decision was right before memorial day 2024 yeah today is october 19th 2024 so that is a long period of time and then basically since july we've been dealing with the, the construction yeah. and, and you know the home renovation portion oh by the way throw in there the fact that you know not to keep talking about it, but we lost Lucy, our English bulldog, 10 years old, uh, and, and that has taken an emotional toll. And we lost our refrigerator and freezer last weekend yes. while we were away. But yes, we did. <laughs> that's, that's, Aside from that, that's everything that. is great. So yeah, it's been, it's been an adventure, uh, and when we were talking about this video and what we wanted to talk about, I wanted to title this one Rebellion, uh, because it's just taken a toll uh, on the fact that like Jillian said, relentless consistency over time. Even though I'm not prepping, I'm doing all the training with you. Yep. Uh, and I yep. have been in a slight caloric deficit. And it's just every now and then you just want to go crazy and get uh, a pizza <laughs> or you want to have another uh, serving of dessert yep. or maybe just another serving of, even though the food is healthy, you just want more. So uh, the way I try to cope with all of this is... I have to keep remembering that I don't have to do this. Right. 
I get to do this. This was a choice that I made. This right. was a choice that we sat down and discussed for many, many hours before making this decision. And it's not about having to, it's about getting to. I have to do this, but she <laughs> gets to do this. <laughs> but it, it, is, it is very much a privilege to be able to carve out right. time to be able to do this and reminding myself that I am not sentenced to this. There are Correct. people that don't have food. Yes. You know, that for me, like it is a choice that I am making. So that is very, very helpful to remind myself that, again, that this is something that, that this is an absolute choice. And that, that's one of the things that I come back to when I have to have a little bit of my daily gratitude when right. I am being um, a hangry B-I-T-C. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> yeah, no, we, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. We were very frustrated because the delivery of the refrigerator was taking a long time. And then I just Ten took a hours. moment. Ten hours. <laughs> yeah, I just took a moment and said, there are people who are literally digging their living room out, you know, wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow full after of sand the after Hurricane yep. Helene. There are people that don't have a living room anymore. So that perspective has been very important to help us manage when we start ramping. And, yeah. you know, we do tend to feed off of each other in good we times do. and in bad. So we, we recentered ourselves from that perspective. So And perspective kind of gets lost. The closer you get, the more of an inability that you have to see things clearly. And, and that is part of the decision that I chose to work with coaches and not do it on my right. own. The further you get into it, like you just can't see it. And right. some of it, it, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword that we're in it together. So Scott has joined me, as you've seen, for all of the training, except a little bit of the extra glute work. I don't do the glute work. <laughs> I and, don't need it, quite frankly. I mean, and he eats the same foods that I do. Granted, he eats them in bigger quantities, and if he wants a little bit more rice or something else, he gets to have right. that. So he is experiencing much of what I, what much of what I am experiencing. Right. So some of the times that we get hangry, we are getting hangry together. Right. So one of the decisions we made a couple weeks ago was that he actually needs to be in a good space right. and needs to kind of come a little bit out of the deficit so that he could recognize what he's seeing in me and we're both kind of not in that together. Right, and, and although I did say I was experiencing, I think for me it's more the, the relentless consistency that she mm -hmm. talked about as opposed to the relentless hunger that yes. she is going through. And there are times where I will see her uh, going through some increasing levels of anxiety and I will just tell her, whatever you are doing, stop, eat, and then we will pick up the conversation yeah. and there's a that clicks in a recognition of what's going on and that is partially why we have increased the walking again because that is coming being outside is coming so i have not been prescribed to do additional steps per day that is just that has been a coping a coping mechanism for us correct and the other thing so i think we should talk about um, choosing to go internal by internal meaning working out entirely in our in our garage right. gym and not out in public because when I go out in public these days people treat me a lot differently a lot differently and they treat th this is the first time that people have actually started making comments either to Jillian or about Jillian when I was physically right next yeah. to her. Normally they happen when he's not with me. So right. you want to talk a little bit about what happened at the um, RV resort last weekend? Yeah, so we went, uh, we went to one of our favorite places uh, for an RV weekend and we, are, we were walking our dog uh, and somebody literally pulled kind of off the road, rolled their window down and shouted, hey, don't mess with her. I think she can take you. And I'm like, what kind of a jack wagon yeah. thing is that to say? Because one, I already know she can take me. But two, like <laughs> it, domestic abuse is not necessarily a joking matter. So I don't think, although there was no malice uh, that was intended, it's just not appropriate. You know, when you're making comments about somebody else's body and you have no idea who they are, what their story is, that's, a, that's taken yeah. it a little bit too far. So and that was the first of a few incidents that took place on that yeah. walk. So the amount of comments, the amount of people feeling like they could walk up to me and just touch me, or you know, I was in Walmart, somebody said, I just wanted to see if you were real. 
So what does that I, even mean? Right. I, I think sometimes people think that they are giving you a compliment in some way. Right. But there's nothing that makes you feel more uncomfortable than somebody come up coming up to you, even if they believe it's a compliment, commenting on your physical appearance or literally reaching out and grabbing you. Right. And, so, you know, Jillian is going through a lot of training, a lot of preparation. And as much as this video is for you, she is not <laughs> for you. You know, she does not walk around so people can see what muscular arms feel like. And that's, yeah. I mean, it's touching is not okay. So, so I have actually somewhat stopped going out in public. I mean, it, 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 there are times that it gets pretty unbearable. And if I do, I am obviously all covered up. So we have taken to exclusively doing our training at home. Some of it, I, I'm a nice person and it puts me in a very awkward situation. She does not like to break off uh, in conversation. She, she feels but, compelled to talk to someone and it's maddening. But if I'm in the grocery store and somebody just comes up and starts touching me, you know, it's like, I <laughs> leave, I call you on the phone, but it's, I would rather just not put myself in those circumstances. Or but, the amount of people that will ask her like, well, hey, what should I do? You know, well, what should I do when in my work? out so well i mean if you really want to know hire her and that way you know she can actually make some money off of what it is <laughs> that she does for a living but what's crazy is that people are just so responsive to the visual the truth is i was just as good of a coach i knew just as much 20 weeks ago before starting the diet i had more brain cells i was probably more creative right. i was probably better at my job but i did not get the same time same type of attention or people necessarily believing that I am the expert. So very often we believe somebody is an expert in the physical realm when we visually see it. And it's almost directly linked to body composition. Right. Like I said, I had no more knowledge, no more or less knowledge Correct. 20 weeks ago than I had now to help somebody else. So it's been very, very interesting um, from that perspective. I feel like all we've done is complain to you. Not me, video. you're complaining. I'm the one that's complaining, so I apologize. I didn't mean to bring the house down uh, in this conversation. So, but it has been, uh, it has been an adventure, you know. And with adventures, you have highs and you have lows throughout the, the course of the, the last 20, 21 weeks. Yep. So, uh, you want to talk about uh, Jamie Lewis? Sure. So Jamie Lewis, who on Instagram is Plague of Strength. Uh, asked Jillian, and they've corresponded uh, not in public, in through DMs, uh, but he asked you basically, how is it that you can do some of the things that you can? So we've, she's been in a caloric deficit, and last week I watched her do, and I think you all did too on Instagram, 30 dead hang yeah. pull-ups. In my life, I've never been able to do 30 dead hang pull-ups, let alone in a massive prep or cut. Yeah, or... Set after set. So first I want to thank Jamie for, he's been featuring me and I am tremendously honored yes. to be recognized and to be featured. But he asked a question this morning about push-ups and my splayed grip on the push-up, if that was intentional or not intentional. So a lot of people see me do these crazy body weight exercises. The 30 pull, uh, 30 push-ups, or I'm sorry, 30 pull-ups, 1,190 push-ups in an hour. Or, or just to be able to go, or, or just to get right. up on that bar and not to fatigue. So um, I wanted to address both the mental and physical aspects of that. So first of all, physically, if you notice that there are times that I will take my shoes off if I'm doing exercises, or if you notice my hands are splayed, I literally, when I am doing high volume calisthenic work, try to use every ounce of muscle from the top of the hair of my head down to my toes, down to my fingertips. And what that allows me to do is not to fatigue locally that quickly. So right. I know in terms of bodybuilding and other stuff, you may want to fatigue your chest or your triceps, you know, on push-ups. But I am accustomed to doing very, very high volume, you know, chasing right. world records on those, doing those kinds of things. So I have over the years trained myself to use my body as a system. So when I'm using my body as a system, I'm just not using my pecs, my triceps to do those push-ups. I am really using everything down right. to my fingertips. And that allows me to perform at very high reps. The other thing is it is honestly the years of practice. So I'm like, how could you do these things ahead that nobody else can do? I knew that I wanted to do this, what I am doing, like when I was a toddler. Before I could make full sentences, like I had a love and an aptitude for this. So the training has gone on for 
many, many decades. You were, uh, you started gymnastics training, you were two. Before two, yep, before the age of two. So a lot of that is, is practice, but I think the real difference, I don't know that I'm physiologically different. It was just recognizing something early on, but the way I mentally approach things like that and don't get overwhelmed, and this theme has come up before when I talk about either one meal or one workout, just one to the next, whenever I am doing a movement or an exercise, even if I have the goal number in mind, I am literally breaking that up into a single repetition at a time. The power of one. Executed with perfection. So, or, or a trying to achieve perfection. So I am trying, rather than thinking, man, I'm gonna get up on this bar and I'm gonna do multiple sets of some crazy number of pull-ups, or I'm about to get down and do a thousand push-ups in today's workout, I'm really thinking of that as a singular rep. And as soon as that singular rep is done, it's behind me and I'm on to the next singular rep. And that is how I manage that stuff from kind of becoming overwhelming. Right. And I focus on the form rather than like, I have this many more to go, right. that many more to go. And I think I am taking those same things that I use in my, in, kind of in my physical training and kind of applying them to the prep where it's not like, man, for the next four weeks, I'm gonna be hungry. It's really like, I'm gonna eat this meal and I'm gonna manage myself on what I need to do until three hours from now, the next meal comes. Right. And I mean, this is something that it's not just specific to Jillian. Anybody can try it, if you, but it requires I would say practice, it requires a lot of consistency. Uh, and that's really been kind of the theme of this whole prep has been consistency and over time. You there. have to keep mentally rehearsing, I'm gonna do one, and then I'm gonna do one, and then I'm gonna do one. I watched her do it this morning with push-ups, and it but was it, pretty amazing. It is finding comfort in the uncomfortable. I know I'm gonna be uncomfortable. Um, I, I enjoy being uncomfortable, but it's knowing like nothing is gonna happen to me. Like again, I could choose. I can choose right. to stop. Again, I get to do this. I don't have to do this. If I tell you I'm going to get down and I'm going to do 100 push-ups, nobody is going to hurt me if I don't do 100 push-ups. Right. So uh, again, kind of seeing that as a choice. All right. Did we hit all of our topics? We or? did, but I want to talk about what's to come over. So we are just right. under four weeks out. We are going to do another video two weeks from now when I am two weeks before the prep. Start two weeks before the show. <laughs> Diet brain. <laughs> and then after that, the next video will be the show is on a Friday. So it's Friday, November 15th. We will do the next video as a wrap up on Saturday or Sunday after returning. Probably Sunday because Saturday we're driving back from the show. So yep. we may need just to, to let everything yep. sink in and, and get some perspective after the the six month journey. And then the plan going forward is to continue to release these videos every couple of weeks because I really want to show what it's like to come back for that event to be behind us, to kind of reintegrate in normal life when we're not driven and fixated on this one thing and what it's like for my body to go back to being healthy. Right. All right. Well, I think that is it. And I, ooh, we're like three minutes faster than we normally are. So I will just wrap up by saying, you. if you enjoyed this, please like and share the video with anybody you think it might help. Uh, and then subscribe by hitting the bell. You'll get notified of any new content that is coming out. Until two weeks from now, and we'll see what, uh, what Diet Brain has done to <laughs> both of us. Uh, we wish you all very well. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank Take you. Care.